I'm mad. We just had an amazingly hilarious, like, natural, comedic moment. And I thought it was recorded, but it wasn't. So now y'all are never going to know what it was. And it's my fault. So, boo this man. Boo this man. The unfortunate thing is I can't remember what the setup was for it. I oh, the setup what it, was... What it was. Oh, no, I, oh, no, I know the setup. I, know, I remember the it. whole thing. Go ahead. Oh. Nate picked Godzilla. I picked Godzilla, you picked... I picked King Kong. And you and were neutral. You're neutral, and I said... You're Switzerland. Nick is Switzerland. And then... And then I said, thank you for fi thank you for saying Switzerland, because I can't tell you how many people uh, I've heard say Sweden. Sweden wasn't neutral. And then you said... Yeah, I said, Sweden just makes good metal. Yeah, and I was like... You know, actually, they were supplying a lot of metal to the Nazis during World War II. <laughs> To which they were just like I did. He, they were both just like, like I didn't not, know not what that. I meant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He didn't mean that. Like, and I'm like, it I was know so you didn't funny mean that because it was so candid. But now yes. it's not as funny. Uh, no, it's just, not. But damn, it like a few minutes ago. I really wish I had recorded that. That was so good. <laughs> it was. That was such a great natural moment. Also, yeah, disclaimer: I have recording. no horse in this race for this rap, rap battle because yeah. I haven't watched any Godzilla or King Kong movies ever. So. I'm going to miss some of the references, so sorry to those who get mad when we miss references, but I'm going to miss Hey, them. I'll get them. I'm mainly just here so people don't ask where I was. Hey, so. that's fine, that's fine. Honestly, it, I'm here, I'm here to enjoy this. I know that a lot of people out there, you know, are like, but there, there's some people who would ask, why are they doing Godzilla versus King Kong? Well, a couple of reasons. It's two of the most famous mon movie monsters of all time. And also, not only that, but the new Godzilla and King Kong movie are coming out. And, uh, yeah, I don't know... I don't know who's going to win this, but in my personal opinion, if this were a death battle, I think Godzilla would win. But this is a rat battle. And, uh, yeah, I don't know... I don't know who's going to win this, but... I guess the only way we are going to find out is by watching. So, we're going to watch it all the way through. No pausing. No nonsense. And we will discuss afterwards who we think won. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Sound good to y'all? Let's get into it. Here we go. This is Upper Rock Bottom of the War! Godzilla vs. King Kong. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, I did it again. Well done. I said no pausing, and I already broke that rule. There we go. Okay. Now here we go. Got that one. 
really cool that they got those uh, that, cool. that they got those suits to do that oh they're going I was kind of wondering how they had made that and I guess they kind of told us there at the end. hey man honestly I'm cool with the, I, I love that I love they, they basically did mocap like how Badger's doing but they're doing like the phone face thing to like capture their mo- face motions to like match with the animations which is really cool stuff Ah, uh, damn. Closest we we could go to is Tampa, Florida. Jesus. Ah. Uh, maybe we'll be able to go, because that's in August. Uh, okay. I'm not going to lie. I really would listen to, like, a lot of music if it was, like, the voice of Godzilla in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like the style of it. It's kind of, like, halfway between metal and rap. Well, yeah. I mean, it... That's the thing. They're both fan. They're fans of both genres. They're fans of like. They're fans of almost every genre, for being honest, because these guys are just really good about shaping and and just putting things in ways that, honestly, I remember when they did Mozart versus Skrillex. It was classical versus dubstep, and they made it work really well because they did the classical side with Mozart, and you could tell like they really respect classical. But then they also, they didn't just dunk on dubstep like everyone does. Like, oh, dubstep all sounds the same. No, they actually incorporated dubstep and made Skrillex stand on his own. And and while I do think uh, Skrillex did lose that uh, that rap battle, I still felt like they, they did plenty of research on how to incorporate dubstep into that style of a rap song to make it stand out and to incorporate uh, you know, Skrillex. Yeah. But uh, just to illustrate, I really don't think he'll care if I play a little bit of his music because he's indie. There's a guy named Haskin I listen to that his music's like this. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> you know, reminds what? me of something like well, that. You, you know, know? You know everyone talks about trap music nowadays. You know, trap. You know, trap. You know what? I call that death trap. Pretty much. Because it's basically, it's death metal trap music. Nothing wrong with it. It's just like when new metal came out. Hell, it's like you had like Rage Against the Machine and you had like all these dudes rocking to like Rage Against the Machine, but even the old heads who liked rap back, like, you know, big rap heads back in the day hear Rage Against the Machine, they're just like, yeah, I like this. It's like Public Enemy. Public Enemy loves Anthrax. Anthrax loves Public Enemy and thus you had Bring the Noise and I don't get... Why people are afraid of like fusing genres and seeing what happens? Because everyone's just like, oh, well, then you get Limp Biscuit and you get all these other. Cra-. But it's like, dude, dude, you get so much more. You get so many opportunities to just like, like build on something. And these guys aren't afraid to do that. That's why I love. That's why I love this so much. I love seeing these guys work and just put and just like put together 
these tremendous just the, it it it's a tremendous amount of work that goes into these. I don't think that can be stated enough, y'all. And that's why I happily support them on Patreon because they deserve it. They deserve all the support given everything they've been through, how long they've been on the platform, how consistent they've been. Yeah, this is hands down like 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 these are some of the last truly great old school creators that are still here. You know, you look at the ones that are going away. You look at Matt Pat, who very soon will be doing his final game theory. You look at you look at Nogla, who li who recently just announced that he is going to be stepping back from going full time with the Vanoss crew. What? Yeah, he's stepping back a little bit. Except for he's still running his own solo channel. Yes, he's still oh. running his own solo channel, and he'll still be doing stuff with people, but it'll be on his time because number one, he's a dad. Yeah. And his kid comes first, and he's made that abundantly clear. And the and other thing is he's in a different time zone than most of the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, he, he's in Ireland, and he wants to stay in Ireland. Whereas Brian, who is Irish, does live in between Ireland and the United States, like on the West Coast with Lene. And uh, basically that's like... And it's easier for Brian because where he's basically in the U.S. for half the year or, or more... It's easier for him. Whereas Nogla, where he wants to stay in Ireland, and him and uh, and uh, and hit, uh, basically his daughter is like number one in his life and everything. Mm -hmm. And then of course, uh, Aaliyah. Thank I brain took my brain a minute to like get her name in there, even though she killed me maliciously in in uh, Among Us. Never gonna forget that Aaliyah, ever. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's part of the game. <laughs> yeah, I know, but. Um, Don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Aaliyah, but Nogla and Aaliyah basically want to stay in Ireland, raise their kid in Ireland, and that's and that's their prerogative. Plus, Nogla's got plenty enough of a following to where he doesn't have to play with Vanos all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's more than capable on his own. But, yeah, so... Well, back to this. Who yeah. do you think won? Huh? Who do you think won? It's a tough one. I think I'm overly biased just because I like that style so much from the Godzilla boys. I liked... I like. I, I would say they that both Godzilla's had good bars. style... I'd say Godzilla's style was better, but I think... I think King it Kong felt to me probably like... probably had better bars. Well, I think it felt to me like there were more heavy hits from Godzilla's side. Whereas, like, there were really heavy hits on King Kong's side, but they were, like, spaced out more. Does that make sense? I guess, but I, I know the Pacific Rim too. I think I would say you. Godzilla was more consistent, whereas King Kong had some of the best. I don't know. I, like I felt like in the first part, Godzilla definitely had it, but then and there was just some of the flow from Godzilla that I was just like, "That's fucking good." Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, he did like the he did the fucking fronds for a second there while he was swimming underwater. You know, the kind of thing. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, that was dope. But <laughs> so I think I'm just biased because I liked it. Well, I also love the uh, love. It's like its beauty killed the beat. Like Nintendo did. The only game I play is Rampage. Uh, Lizzie, Lizzie, its beauty kills the beast, and you just ain't pretty. No way you're as brain. Uh, no way you can like hang that, with these monkey bars. All of that right there to me is like not super heavy hitting. No, well, no, it's it's pun related. It's he's not attacking Godzilla completely yet. He's setting himself up right here. You ain't got no punch lines. You barely got it. You barely even got arms. Yeah, because that was true. the first decent punch right there. Man. It's like first time made a movie and get dunked on like Barkley at the base of Mount Fuji. Uh oh yeah, that's the whole thing as well as everyone forgets that King Kong came before Godzilla. King Kong came out in 33. Godzilla, the first one, came out in 1954. Mm. So, yeah, that's his reference here. I'm as old as Death Row, repping RKO. So that's... RKO was the picture company that made the original Godzilla. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bad English captions. Your words don't even match your actions. <laughs> that's true. That's true, too. And, uh... Let's see... The worst kaiju comeback since Pacific Rim 2. That's that one was a, a good one. 
Uh, Tonight, oh yeah, you're. <laughs> You're such a joke, Jack Black is in your remake. Yeah, <laughs> that, so was that was a big funny. one to me. Yeah. <laughs> Tighten your fish lips around Tenacious D's nuts. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't you ain't a rap Godzilla. You're more you're more like prey to me. In Japan you're a metaphor for nuclear war, but in Hollywood they left your balls on the cutting room floor. And that's true because in the nineteen ninety eight Godzilla, they made Godzilla or Zilla, they they have done everything they can to distance themselves from, like, the 1998 Godzilla. They refer to that version of Godzilla as just Zilla, and it's the weakest version of Godzilla. Hmm. And here's the thing about it is uh, they basically made that Godzilla female and had her lay a bunch of eggs in Madison Square Garden. What? Yes. Yes, that's... What? God, that film is so, so shitty. Also, the whole thing about... and and. The, and have make you any cooler what kind of bumpy chump gets punked by Ferris Bueller because Matthew Broderick who plays Ferris Bueller was the hero in the 1988 Godzilla film and wound up killing Godzilla and wound up you know his plan wound up killing Godzilla and all the eggs mm. and uh yeah that and then of course here's the part that you liked with him like underwater just you know spitting spitting really fast uh, my voice cuts deep like I'm revving on a double bass. I spit the verse to Skull Island. I'll turn Skull Island into Pompeii. It's like, oof. So, once again, like the rhymes in this are really, really tight. And the egg you laid, you ugly Mothra fucker. That's, that's a good pun on Mothra. Uh, whole suit... I don't know how you could get someone... I don't know how you could get pregnant. Your whole suit's a big rubber. Uh, let's see. I'm the Apex Grade 8. I like all monsters. <laughs> that particular little part right there was the one where I was just kind of like, yeah, it's, it's not quite as good as the rest of the stuff he had well, before. Well, I'm the Apex Grade 8. Great, Great with the, with the ape, ape Axe. Axe. I'm like, what? That's from the new Godzilla King Kong movie. Oh, he has an axe. He has a big fuck all axe. Oh, okay. oh. And he actually uses that axe to kill Mecha Godzilla. Spoilers. And it's and it's it's just awesome. I love that axe. And like all monsters attack, your raps are recycled crap. And, ba and that's tr and that's right because the that game was basically recycled from all monsters melee. Mm. And that's the reference to that. This alpha gorilla won't be bringing no silver back, because just like Brian Cranston, you, you'll be you've been dead since the first act. Yeah, even though I haven't seen the movies, I did hear about that. Like that someone is, said, they were sad that they oh, had Brian Cranston, most, but he oh. was dead so early into the film. That's the most boneheaded play. You have Brian Cranston, who is on the biggest career upswing of any actor at that time. Everyone wants him in their projects. Everyone wants him, in the, and then they get him in Godzilla, and they have it placed to where he's going to be one of the main characters who's going to help take down Godzilla. How dare you think that they would maybe, be smart enough to do something like maybe that? He, maybe he was short on time, and that's all they oh, no, him for. Oh, no. No, Brian Cranston wanted to be in the film entirely. Oh, he did? He wanted it, dude. He was dying to be a part of it completely all the way through. Hmm. So he didn't even like what they did with his character? Oh, no. He's talked about it multiple times. He said, he said, I wanted them to keep me in the film. I wanted to stay. But they had their plan, and they didn't deviate. And... Hmm. Honestly, that's that's on them. Because, yeah, you get... You have Brian Cranston and you trade him for Aaron Taylor Johnson, who, while in certain cases can be good, I'm sorry, but with no one around him, he has the... He has, like, the personality of a wet blanket. Ugh. But, all right. Anywho... you were going to say personality of a wet mop. Well, what... What movie is that from? And where I heard that, I give up. What? Grease. <laughs> oh yeah, it did say that. I. Can make... Oh, that's right. <laughs> so, 
overall though, I would say for me, I guess because I under I guess because like once again, it's because you said like you didn't get the references. I guess from a more like approachable standpoint from someone who does who wouldn't get all the references, Godzilla would have, you know, has the more like baseline approachable. Whereas King Kong, I guess like is from I mean maybe that's the whole thing. Films. Maybe uh, maybe the, his barbs were just the smartest and I missed them. No, no, no. It's not the fact that they're smarter. It's the fact that, you know, the references for you, you get the references easier because Godzilla was more wide with his references and was more like was and included other things that you're aware of in the pop cultural sphere. Whereas, you know, for people who've seen the films, like me, I, you know, I guess, like, it's more, like, King Kong's is more concentrated within the scope of, like, what, of, like, what those are, whereas Godzilla has a wider, like, a wider attack frame. So it's just two different ways of going about it. I mean, for you... I could see, like, I could see, like, definitely Godzilla had the stronger verses overall in terms of, like, variety. But, of course, King Kong made multiple references to the 98 Godzilla film in multiple verses. And that, in a lot of ways, to some rap heads, is considered lazy. Because if you re if you reference the same thing and don't really add anything new to it with your second appraisal of it, then what's the point of mentioning it? Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Like, I feel like bringing the same thing up again later on is kind of like not as impactful as continually varying your attacks when you're well, doing a battle. Well, it's just like uh, Eminem and uh, Eight Mile. It's like, it's like I know everything he's about to say against me. I am white. I am a fucking bum. I do live in a trailer with my mom. It's like, pay attention. You're saying the same shit that he said. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that. Like Ain't you paying attention, meathead? Pay atten it's like didn't you pay attention in the rat salon, meathead? <laughs> Dream up new shit. You're saying the same shit that he said. I'ma fuck you up. <laughs> I still but never saw that movie. It's oh it's great, dude. The ending rap battles are fucking tremendous. It came out back when I was very anti rap, so Eh. Maybe you'll so, like it now. I used to be very non-rappy back in high school. I was I was all about. I probably it, dude. should phrase it better than that. I, <laughs> oh, would you say Would you say that you were quite the rapist? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. You need to watch your words. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like I used to tell people that oh. yeah, just because it's on a CD doesn't mean it's actually music because they put prank phone calls on CDs too. That's true. That, that yeah, is but true. But I, I, then, I since then actually grew and got an appreciation I, for a lot of it. I like when I was a kid. I grew up on like I grew up on rap and stuff like that because of my dad, but also because of uh, several of my friends at school. Because my dad introduced me to like Notorious B.I.G., uh, Craig Mack, Tupac. Uh, but then I got I got to school and my friend who whose dad was like an old head with rap music introduced me to like Wu-Tang Nas and just a bunch of a bunch of like oh dude I, I remember the first time I heard uh, Survival of the Fittest by Mob D holy shit Let's see what I happened for me my, eyes opened up. my sister originally soured me on the idea of rap by explaining to me why she didn't like it which was because all of the instrumentations and such were usually done by a DJ, which she didn't consider to be, you know, actually musicianship. That's not true and at all. And then she said that all of the lyrics and stuff were just talking, and it's like anybody can just talk. No. And uh, and like no. later on, like uh, I will credit the person, the musician that actually changed my entire mind about rap was Tech Nine. Well, so I heard Tech Nine, and I was like, I'm always impressed by anything that I can't do, and I couldn't do that. Well, no, Tech is a monster, dude. <laughs> like, Tech Nine's a monster. And I remember, like, the people say that, but also there's a bunch of rappers who actually come up with their own. Or, like, for instance, I, I talked about Mob Deep. Havoc is easily one of the best, like, producers ever because he comes up with all of the sounds and the samples himself. And his beats are so simple, but are so impactful just because of how they're made. And him and Prodigy 
are both really good lyricists. Mm. I'd say Prodigy was overall the better lyricist. Bless you. Bless you. But mm. Havoc was a double threat, uh, is a dual threat, like, really, really worthwhile. But anyway, know, also, he, since uh, Fountain Freestyle to be incredibly impressive, because I can't come up with things on the fly like freestylers <laughs> do either, so that's impressive to me as well. Yeah, anyway, I... We're, we're, this video is currently 25 minutes long, and this was only three minutes long. And four. We got four minutes long. Well, that's how it goes with these. Yeah, but we anyway. We got a lot to say about music, and we don't do music reactions that often, so it happens. Hey, I like doing this stuff. But anyway, that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you all very much for tuning in, and until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Be sure to support more Epic Rap Battle of Victory by checking out their Patreon. Hey, you can join us on there and uh, be, a, be a supporter. Because, hey, the more stuff they do like this, the happier I'll be. So, till next time, we'll see you then. Peace.